Hi, my name is Jeremy Cook, and today I'll be talking about my Light Up Drink Coaster. This coaster is made in such a way that if you put a cup on it, it lights up. Take the cup off and it, it uh, goes dark again. You can see here my CAD model that I used to, to cut it out on my CNC router. Wires are put uh, inside of it, connecting the CR2032 batteries to, to provide 12 volts to the LEDs. The top and the bottom act as kind of a switch so that when you put, press it in, the top, uh, top, top connections connect and when it's off, they go off. Pretty simple, really. So here I am cutting out the initial material from you know, some translucent plastic that was from a, a light box that I had. So anyway, first step was to put it on my bandsaw and cut a small piece of material so I could put it on my CNC router. Here I am setting it up. This uh, CNC router is a Zen Toolworks 7x12 model. Works really well. It was pretty nice last time we moved. I just, you know, pretty much just turned it on and it worked, which is really what you what you want in something like this. So really, really cool to be able to just turn something on and have it route stuff out for you. I mean, granted, there's a lot of design work that goes into it, but you know, that's that's part of the fun, I guess. So after that, I had to cut off the holding tabs because. Yeah, otherwise it just flops around and gets hurt by the router. And more bandsaw work, cutting off the tabs. And then after this I'll have to have to file a little bit. A little bit of a little bit of work. You know, as you can see a CNC router, even though it's a huge great tool for making some cool projects, it's still you still have to have some work put into this. It doesn't you don't just flip a switch and it comes out assembled. So here I am, I'm cutting out the LED strips, giving it an initial trial. Here are my CR2032 batteries. You know, initially the, the fit was kind of tight, and I'll have to fix that in a later version that you'll see me work on. And, um, but here, here I am, cutting out the wires, putting them in. As you can see here, the positive and the negative of the two CR2032 batteries are connected on the bottom. And then on the, the back, the idea is to connect it with one or more wire from the top, the top holder, or the top uh, piece of plastic. If you're paying attention, you know, you might realize that this isn't going to work. And you'll see the explanation in just a second. The initial design of the circuit was drawn out looked like the picture on the left. You had the positive the negative, and the negative connected on the bottom and then it was going straight to the 6 volt, 6 volt battery, or sorry, 12 volt LEDs. It's supposed to be 12 volts, but really it was only 6 volts, if that. Once it was revised, I put two connections on the top. You can see those drawn in blue. And then you had a circuit. You went from the light to the first battery to the second battery to the third and the fourth and then to the light again. Worked. Obviously, just worked. You know, giving it 12 volts. But to do this, I made a new cutout off my CNC. I made the connections for the wires in a square. So if I needed to revise it, I could just revise it. I didn't have to cut it out again. Also, I made things a little bit deeper because it didn't fit quite right the first time. So here's some more router work. Same sort of thing, but need to see it again. And like the first time had to cut out some holding tabs. As I mentioned earlier, I made the, the cavities for the lights a little bit bigger, so they fit in better, but I still should have probably made it a little bit bigger, so maybe that's a lesson for next time. So here I am placing them in there, and then after this I'll put the CR2032 batteries in. Here's me putting some hot glue for the first wire. And that it went in pretty pretty nicely. And you'll see me here in a second uh, putting in the second wire, the, uh, the positive lead that goes to the first light. And then after that, I'll put in the, the ground or the negative lead that goes to the second light, connecting to that, the first and last 
CR2032 battery, the positive and the negative side, respectively. After this, I of course had to put the two wires into the top piece, unlike when I tried to do it with just one before. So those went in, and then once that dried and everything was uh, properly assembled, it was time to test it. Or actually, I had to take off the holding tabs first, you know, do a little more sawing and, um, and scraping, because I thought I'd just leave this till the end, you know, to cut the protective film on it too, so it looked nice. But once I actually tested it, as seen here, it worked, worked really well. Those LEDs look quite bright, even though they're a little bit diffused by the plastic. And um, you can see a good view of the connecting wires here. What I'm doing is putting some hot glue on it, so it would attach together. And you know, if I picked it up, it wouldn't just come apart. I had to actually do this several times because it's quite sensitive as to how, as to how far it gets pushed to turn it on or off. This was uh, partially corrected by the fact that I put a little bit more, took a little bit more material off the top piece, so it would flex a little bit more. But after some uh, some adjustment, I got it working just how it should, and you'll see that in just a second. So here, here I am trying it out on our kitchen table. You can see the back looks looks pretty cool because you can see the circuits of the uh, at the LED strips, kind of giving you a, a view of it. And that's exactly how it's supposed to work. You put the cup on it, it lights up. Granted, the cup usually needs to be fill, filled, but you know, need a little bit of weight on there. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you enjoyed it, please uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe on YouTube, or follow on Twitter at Jeremy S. Cook.